Hey guys, it's Jimmy and welcome back to the channel. And we're taking a break from Oasis and that sort of rock to talk about David Bowie, one of the greatest musicians of all time, just an absolute legend. And I want to talk about some, one of his most underrated albums and not talked about albums because everyone talks about, obviously, Ziggy Stardust, all those classic albums, Hunky Dory. But let's talk about something from the later side of his career, which is Heathen from 2002. I feel like Heathen was the return for me for for Bowie just being great. I, I think this is a fascinating album. I think it's an album full of real uh, power and real depth for Bowie. I feel like what he chose to do on Heathen was completely strip back everything. Like This isn't a, a Ziggy album. This isn't Aladdin Sane. This isn't characters. This is just Bowie putting it all out there, honesty, and you're meeting the real man on Heaven. I feel like out of all the albums he's done, probably Heaven is the one where you meet the real David Bowie. So the album starts off with Sunday, which is such a cinematic song. It really conjures up this sci-fi dystopian imagery. For me, it completely sets the tone for what Bowie's trying to do on this album. You know, it's ambient, it's, uh, you know, full of um, despair and confusion, but also at the same time, wonder. It's not a negative song, but it is a song of pondering, you know, it almost feels like Bowie's staring out at the remains of a desolate wasteland, as he says, nothing remains. We could run when rain slows, we can look for the cars or the signs of life. You know, it really is. It conjures up sci-fi movie imagery of just looking out at a planet that's now a wasteland. It's such a visual song, I can really conjure that in my head. Bowie's haunting delivery. And yeah, wonderful ambient work on this. The instrumentals and the um, background music is fantastic on this album. And this really hits you off guard and you're like, wow, this is going to be a cinematic album. This is going to be something we haven't heard from Bowie before. Cactus is the second track. And now this is um, interesting because you don't expect this song to come next. You know, while Heathen for me really does feel like a complete package, it's full of ambience, it's full of, um, you know, sci-fi cinematic stuff there's also these really kind of um glorious and well-delivered dark rock songs on here so cactus is a cover of the pixie song which already has odd as hell lyrics get your dress all wet and send it to me and this you know there's, a, there's a, an odd feeling to this and bowie just comes in and makes it vampire-esque there's gothic bells there's a dark haunting mood and Bowie sounds perfect on it. I actually think this song is fantastic, you know, and um, Bowie really makes the um, covers on this album feel like his own. And you're caught off guard. You're not expecting this song to come after Sunday, but it still feels like it should. <laughs> it, all, it, it, it just works. Slip Away is the third track. It's nostalgic. It's sentimental. There's a nice piano mix with the ambience and Bowie's wonderful lovely uh, vocal full of feeling full of yearning full of confrontation of uh, themes such as aging and time passing by it's actually a song that's written about the uncle floyd show which is a 70s tv show so it's kind of glancing into that childlike world but also the loss of that innocence it's, it's all there on this track the, the two worlds slow burn is the next track i'm not actually the biggest fan of this one this is the only track on even where i can't really get into it and i know a lot of people do like this song it does have a great guitar and bass melody though, but the me the vocal melody and the hook etc didn't really hook me. I didn't really get invested in this song, but it's perfectly fine. Afraid is the next song and this is fantastic. It's one of the most straight up times where Bowie has just been complete, flat out honest on the track, not really dressed it up with a lot of metaphor, just literally saying to you, I am so afraid, you know, literally showing vulnerability. You never would hear this stuff from Bowie back in the 80s where he's playing a character or in the 90s where he was just kind of trying to do some electronic music this is just Bowie being completely honest showing you the real man showing you the um turmoil inside of him I'm still so afraid on my own is just a, a a sad line but you know the guitar and um the bass and the drums have an infectious pattern on this so it stops it from the song being depressing and while this is an album where it's uh full of these very serious themes it's not a depressing album i like that i like how bowie's able to still give this feeling of the music 
uh, not necessarily uplifting you, but keeping you um, engaged and having fun listening to it. What made my life so wonderful? What made me feel so bad? You know, you can't get more honest than from the heart. And Bowie was always supposed to do these theatrical lyrics that weren't necessarily from the heart. And it's refreshing to hear him being as honest as hell. I've Been Waiting For You is a deliciously dark cover of a Neil Young track. Downbeat and it's low, but it's still so much fun. It's so much joy because the instrumental work is just, oh, it's just so sleek and um, fun to listen to and, and, and jamming out. It sounds like Bowie picked this song to just jam out. It's one of his best covers. And he makes it his own like he does with all of his covers. He makes it his own. When I think of this song, even though I like the Neil Young original, I think of it on Heaven, you know, Bowie transforms a song when he takes it on. It makes it feel like he's it's always him who wrote it. I Would Be Your Slave is an interesting song. It's actually seen by many who talk about this album as a filler song, but I actually think it's fantastic. The ambience in the background almost sounds a bit like Moby, you know, it's so spacious. And Bowie is uh, really, really um, loving with his delivery. It's a really nice, romantic... Um, delivery by Bowie, open up your heart to me, show me who you are and I'll be your slave. That's just, how can you not? How can you not be touched by that line? Again, you know, it's not just a generic love song. He's got these love-esque lyrics on top of this absorbing, spacious, um, you know, out there ambient feel and it just works so well. The ambience mixed with Bowie's voice on this album is is fantastic. Uh, and I feel like he'd really found something here uh, that uh, he actually held on to for the rest of his career. He was always bringing back the ambience in a lot of his later albums too. The next song is another cover. I took a trip on a Gemini spaceship by legendary Stardust Cowboy. Again, you know, if you look back, uh, you know, you know I'd, I'd only heard this version of the song, so I went back and I listened to the original version, it's nothing like this. And again, Bowie has transformed this song completely. He brings back his kind of earthling electronic style on this. And it's just a blast. This is just a whole heap of fun. Um, it really elevates the original. I wasn't the, big, wasn't the biggest fan of the original. This is just, you You really get the feels of Bowie, you know, behind a, a wheel in a, in a ship hurtling through space. It really does create those vibes. And I feel like Bowie does well with his voice because he just, he twists the melody of his voice to make it fit on this strange electronic um, instrumental. Uh, and I'm really impressed by that. You know, you, you, when this song starts, you don't know what to make of it. But by the end, you just love it. Next one is 515, The Angels Have Gone. This is a glorious spiritual track. It has some lush bass on it, a really romantic and regretful Bowie delivery. 515, train overdue. Angels have gone, we never talk anymore. Forever I will adore you. This is a beautiful song of just about missing someone, about regretting what happened. And when a musician can tap into that, they're gonna get everyone on board because everyone knows that kind of feeling that you can't really put your finger on of a mix of wishing the best for someone but also that great pain of losing them everybody says hi hi is the next track and it kind of leads in perfectly from from 515 the angels have gone everybody says hi is probably my favorite song on the album i love it i love how bowie is basically doing a pop song here but just nailing it more than so many pop musicians would because he's just bringing it his great flair that he has on this album haunting but modern for the time pop record don't stay in a sad place where they don't care how you are it's just it's wonderful like bowie has shown on this album he can write those lyrics that really tap into the regular person's experience and then everyone says hi you know the girl next door and the man upstairs he says creating imagery up of the life you used to have and the people you used to encounter with this old partner it just it gives it such a melancholy um, beauty to it it's just so human and I can imagine this song being used kind of in a film it's very cinematic where I can imagine this being used in a film where someone's missing someone and you're seeing back and forth of the new life this person's living and the person missing them and you know who would have thought you'd have Bowie with that sort of song you'd expect that from the, the pop artist the next song is called Better Future 
this is just full of childlike vibes and the lyrics are basically Bowie speculating whether the world will be okay for his children. I demand a better future. Just such a great little line about, no, I want to see better for my kids. Give my children sunny smiles. Give them room and cloudless skies. That's so beautiful. What a lovely fatherly thing for Bowie to say and we get that side of him. Bowie doesn't really talk about his children on his music and he hadn't really up to this point, you know, much. Uh, not, never so directly, you know, maybe dressed up in metaphor. This is just him literally saying, no, I want my kids to grow up well. It's those feelings you get when you have kids and you realise, oh no, I'm bringing them into quite a mess of a world. And, but while it's that, it's that despair, the, the vibe throughout the track reflects the the childlike innocence and I love that because he's talking about his children he's talking about the fears he has for his children but the music is so innocent and so happy mixed with Bowie um, not knowing and being uncertain about his children's future and the future of the world in general um, it's a great mixture Heaven brackets the rays is the song that closes out the album there's a real combination feeling to this track Kind of returns to the vibes of the first track, Sunday. So I feel like Bowie was kind of trying to take you on a um, journey that culminates in the same way it started. It's almost like he started the album staring out at his desolate wasteland and then he's kind of expressed his feelings about this and now he's back staring out and now he's maybe speculating whether there's a future for this wasteland. Again, it's very sci-fi-esque, very cinematic. And it's, you know, it's gripping, you know, these songs are not boring, you know, while it's Bowie being very cautious, I guess, in a lot of his delivery, because he's not belting it out on a lot of these songs. I don't think there's one song on this album where Bowie belts it out, like the Gene Genie and Heroes, where he really sings his heart out. He's never doing that. But you, you, end, you end up just hooked by his speculative delivery in this, almost his spoken word. I think Stanley Kubrick was a big influence on... The mood and feel of this album because even the rays can just imagine it playing throughout 2001 a space odyssey just so trippy and again so sci-fi-esque is there no reason have i stayed too long you know that's a, a, a nihilistic lyric you know um again a culmination of everything he said on the album like but again you know these lyrics are dark these lyrics are um, somewhat somber and full of confusion and vulnerability but you know again the album it feels alive it does feel hopeful but but it's almost like Bowie's just getting it out there getting his thoughts out there and there's going to be some negative ones and there's going to be some fear in there but again it doesn't sound like a man at the end of his tether who's lost hope it sounds like a man who's being honest about his hopes and dreams and about his fears but he wants to carry on. I'm in love with this album, as I'm sure you can tell. David Bowie Heaven, you know, Bowie's got so many albums which people don't talk about, you know, and I wanted to cover one of them, and I might, I want to cover more Bowie albums on this, on this channel, so let me know what you think of this one. I think it would probably be a detour from the Oasis focus videos I do. I do want to talk about other music other than the Oasis. Let me know if there's any Bowie albums you want me to check out in the comments below. Let me know what you think of Bowie's Heaven. I would strongly recommend, because it might go under the radar of a lot of people, go back and listen to Even just for a really, a real experience of an album. Um, so thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and we'll see what I come up with next. But I will see you guys in the next video.